Neonic Void Productions presents Welcome to Spookocalypse. I am your host, Bunyip, and I am joined with Zio. I don't have any adjectives to describe your talent. Uh, it's just Zio. <laughs> it's just Zio. <laughs> Hi, you know me. You love me. I'm from the depths of hell returned. Hi, I'm Zio. Oh, hey, guys, I have vocal fry. So I'm just going to talk did like you, that. Did you get that from like a, a fast food place? Vocal your, fry? Your vocal fries. Oh, I didn't say vocal fries. Is that vocal fry? Ah, I, I yeah. heard, yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying too hard. Oh my God. <laughs> so thank you all for joining us on today's episode. As we finish out the universal monsters, before we get into that, uh, if you look into the description below, you will see a link to the link tree that will take you to the other podcasts of the Neonic Void Productions family. It will also take you to the YouTube channel, as well as the Twitter, because I'm not going to call that that dumb name. Uh, follow us on Twitter at S-P-O-O-K-O-C-A-L-Y-P-S-E. Again, S P O O K O C A L Y P S E on Twitter. You won't go follow us on there. Um, but yeah, today's flavor mint is. Uh, mm, I kind of want to say swamp water, but swamp water. Yes, I don't know swamp if that's water a good flavor. Maybe maybe like it's like those jelly beans that are either a good flavor or a nasty flavor. It's 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 a uh, tartar sauce. <laughs> it's tartar sauce that's what Tar- we're going with tartar sauce and swamp water at the same time at the same time baby at the same time okay <laughs> and you may be wondering what the hell are we talking about today we are talking about one of my personal favorites in the monsterverse outside the bride of frankenstein which if you haven't listened to please go back a couple episodes and listen to it. it's great um, we are talking about today the creature from the Black Lagoon. A uh, universal monster does not get enough love. All right, so this film was directed by Jack Arnold. And I think it's her story was based, uh, the story is by Maurice Zim. Um, was this based off of a previous story or was it like an original I think it was an original because I haven't found anything about a book or anything yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Most of these movies were based off of earlier stories. And then this one seems like it's like, Oh, we just wrote a screenplay specifically for this. Yeah. Seems like it anyway. Hmm. Well, this was produced by Universal International, and it, well, I'm not sure what the budget was, but it made $1.3 million. <laughs> and we've got a small cast of killer, uh, characters. Killers. Uh, I mean, in a way, it, they could be <laughs> killers if they want to. Yeah. So we've got... Richard Carlson as Dr. David Reed, Julia Adams as Kay Lawrence, Richard Denning as Dr. Mark Williams, Antonio Moreno as Dr. Carl Maya, Nestor Paiva as Captain Lucas, Witt Bissell as Dr. Edwin Thompson. And there's actually multiple actors that play the Gill Man, depending on where he is. Like, So we've yeah. got... Rico Browning as the Gilman when he's underwater, and then Ben Chapman as the Gilman when he's on land. Yeah. And then you get uh, two actresses playing Kay Lawrence, depending if in the water and out of the water. Oh, yeah. I guess you need a stunt double for swimming. 
Yeah, stunt double for swimming. Yeah, Ginger Stanley is Kay Lawrence when she's underwater. Yeah. So. I, You know what? I'll go ahead and say it. So this film was also made to um, a 3D monster horror film. Because if y'all didn't know, because I didn't, apparently 3D films were very popular in the 50s. And this film was released in 54, early 54. And that's pretty much at the tail end of the 3D craze in the 50s. So this film was shot and released in 3D. But then, of course, there was a 2D version that was also released with it. um, Or not too long after. So, fun fact if you didn't know, because I didn't. Now, getting into the plot of the creature from the Black Lagoon. A group of people were in the Amazon uncovering fossils, uh, fossilized evidence, skeletal hand with wet fingers. Um, basically, there's a bunch of people that are just exploring the Amazon, getting a bunch of fossil stuff and whatnot, doing their explanation. They're doing their little geology shit, you know, like you do as doctor. They're exploring the Amazon because I guess back then they didn't, they weren't, their people were still finding shit in the Amazon. So these people are, are in the Amazon and they discover a fossilized skeletal hand with web fingers from the Devenian. Is that how you say it? Devenian period. Um, is, are they serious? Devonian. Devonian. That's what this looks like. Devonian. D. Devonian. Was, yeah. Devonian. I was just making the connection to your um, first name. <laughs> The only difference is, oh, not in, it, yeah, yeah. I was like, Devonian? Yeah, it's from the Devonian period that uh, provides a direct link between um, creatures from land and sea. So they are pretty sure they found evidence of a creature that's like in between the, oh, when creatures went from the ocean to land. Uh, so... The leader, Dr. Carl M- May? Maya. Maya. Maya? Yeah. Maya. Okay, cool. Dr. Car- uh, Carol Carl. Carl Maya orders his two assistants to stay in camp while, of course, he visits the Marine Biology Institute. So this is. <laughs> oh. Carl then reunites with one of his, uh, his friend and former students. Dr. David Reed. I'm like, Reed? Reed Richards? No, it's not. But what if? Uh, David works, at, of course, at an aquarium in California. But more recently, he has been a guest at Carl's Institute in Brazil to study lungfish. And you may be asking, what's a lungfish? Well, a lungfish is a freshwater fish. Freshwater vertebrates. Uh, lungfish are freshwater vertebrates belong to the class of Tiboni, 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 Dipnoi, Dipnoi, yeah. Dipnoi. That's a, that sounds like something freaking um, Doodle Bob Dipnoi. Sorry, it kind of <laughs> it kind of looks like a catfish without whiskers. Yeah, I was about to say that. Look, like, basically, y'all, it looks like a catfish without whiskers. It's a, that's a lungfish, and David, um, is there. Because his boss, the financially minded Dr. Mark Williams, is to f- is funding this trip to um, the Amazon to look for the remainder of this said skeleton. So they find it. He's like, oh, shit, we got to find the rest of it. So they s- send a group down there, more people, to find this, the f- try to find the other piece of these uh, skeleton. Soon after Carl leaves the camp, a... um living thing humanoid uh decides to pop up walk onto the camp <laughs> becomes curious about the people in said camp and then it's and then it fr- it scares the shit out of the assistants and they panic and attack and in response the creature kills them both let me tell you i kind of laughed at this scene cuz it was ridiculous it was it was so dumb and i'm like Damn, they're getting their, their. I mean, first off, they're dead. Like they're gone. He killed. 
the thing was just curious and they're like, ah, sir, try to attack him. And they both died. So bam, wham, bam. Yes, ma'am. They're dead. So, so far creature in the black goons got a kill count of two. Uh, the group goes abroad, aboard, abroad, aboard, aboard the tramp steamer Rita. Captain by Krusty Lucas. Is that his name? Krusty I think, Lucas? I think Krusty's more like an adjective. Wow. Krusty Lucas. <laughs> the group consists of David, Carl, Mark, David's girlfriend, and his colleague, Kay Lawrence, and another scientist, Dr. Edwin Thompson. When they arrive at said camp, they discover that Carl's assistants are, well, dead. Um, they were killed while he was obviously gathering the rest of them. And Lucas suggests it was likely done by a Jaguar, but the, but of course everyone's unsure exactly what killed them. They're like, ah, it's probably a Jaguar. And I was like, mm, I don't know about it. It would have been a lot more messy than that if it was a Jaguar, but that's just me. Uh, further examination of the area. Carl found the fossil. Um, well, he was looking for the uh, more of the fossil and turn and nothing turns up. So he's just like, well, shit. Uh, Mark is, of course, ready to give up on the search for more of this fossil. But David suggests that perhaps a thousand years ago, the part of the embankment containing the rest of the skeleton of this creature fell into the water and it was washed down river and broken by the current. So Carl says the, um, this river leads into a lagoon. Lucas called it, of course, crusty, crusty Lewis, Lucas, apparently called it the black lagoon. And I quote a paradise from which no one has ever returned. So people go there and they do not come back. Scientists, of course, decide to risk it unaware of that. The creature a.k.a. the Gilman, a.k.a. the creature of the Black Lagoon, lives in there. So they decide to, um, well, he's, I mean, they're unaware that they're also being watched by the creature, too, as they're discussing all this. But, of course, the creature lives in the Black Lagoon, duh. And then taking notice, the creature also takes notice of the beautiful K. The creature follows the boat all the way down river to the Black Lagoon. Once they arrive, of course, David and Mark go diving to collect rock samples from the, from the lagoon floor in hopes to find something from the fossil. After they return, Kay goes swimming and is stalked by the creature, who then gets briefly caught in one of the ship's drag lines. It escapes, and the creature leaves a claw behind in the net, revealing its existence. So by this point, they had no idea that the creature existed, but this, oh shit, <gasps> We found a claw. After many encounters with this creature throughout the film, um, the creature claims the lives of Lucas's crew members, it attacks Kay, attempts to abduct her, but it is captured and locked into a cage aboard the ship, the boat or the boat, Rita. During the night, it escapes and attacks Eden, Edwin, sorry, attacks Edwin, who was guarding the, the creature. Uh, he smashes the creature with a lantern and he dives after it, but oh, he is God, how it caught on fire. Just right. Immediately. Right. <laughs> and of course he is severely injured from, uh, from that. Following this incident, uh, David decides they should return to civilization. And Mark, who is obsessed with capturing and or killing this creature. It's like, nah, we're going to get this fucking thing. So the Rita tries to leave. And they find the creature has blocked the lagoon entrance with fallen logs. So the, so the creature's like, yeah, y'all ain't going nowhere, bitch. The fuck? And while the others attempt to remove said logs, uh, Mark is killed while trying to escape the creature single-handed, uh, single-handedly underwater. So the creature kills him under the water. And the creature then climbs aboard the Rita and approaches Kay from behind. She screams bloody murder as the creature takes her, takes her and jumps back into a, um, back into the water into a cart and a cavern lair. 
David, Lucas, and Carl then pursued said creature and Kay, rescuing Kay and ridding the creature with bullets. Riddling. Shooting. Shooting. So they just unload bullets upon this, upon the creature from the Black Lagoon, or the Gill Man. It retreats to the lagoon where its body sinks into the watery depths. And is that the end of the film you'd be asking? Yes. Yes, it is. We don't get anything pretty much after that. It kind of just stops there. <laughs> pretty so much. you're like, okay. Yeah, they shoot it and then it's like running away. Well, I say running, but it's just sort of walking awkwardly. It's like, no, yeah. let him go. We're not here to harm nature. We're just here to study. They're like, what are you talking about? You just, You've been you... doing nothing but harming it. <laughs> Like there's a dynamic between two of the characters who are like, I'm here to take photos with this really big camera that makes it waterproof. And the other one's like, well, I'm here to hunt. And they clash with each other. Yeah. Pretty much. I really like this movie. For example, for one of the reasons I like the way it was shot. Like the underwater scenes, like the way I think it was shot, most likely it was shot through a inside of like an aquarium type scenario and it was filmed through glass that's what i'm assuming because i don't think they had technology back then to put a camera in the water i could be wrong though production let me see did they actually underwater spots which were filmed at the second unit and while well, filming the water reportedly held his breath for up to four minutes I guess. They don't say if they actually shot it in the, um, what do they call it? I'm assuming they shot, I don't think they put it underwater while filming underwater. Yeah, it's tricky to see how they pulled this off because, first of all, how do you film an underwater scene? I mean, now today, nowadays you can probably do it because there's probably um, technology that like where you can case your um, camera in, like a camera case to put underwater. Because I know there are films that do it nowadays, but I don't know how they did it back then because I assumed it was like like an aquarium type situation and they would film from a um, like a window because it looked very crisp. And it looked real fucking good. And I again, I don't know how they did it, but it looked really nice. And it was really, it, it intrigued me. I'm like, I wanted to know how they did it. Yeah, um, especially the costume. Yes, the, the costume, costume was so good. Very well. Yes. Like, it looks like it'd be kind of stiff, but when he's swimming around, it doesn't look like it's stiff at all. Right uninhibited movement like but that face is funny like when he's attacking you it's not that funny but when he's just standing there just opening his mouth like <laughs> it's silly like he's not gonna hurt anybody and he's like i'm gonna hurt you oh no he's just a little guy that killed like four or five people <laughs> and try a drama girl i mean hashtag he did nothing wrong <laughs> Now, the funny thing about this movie is of all the Universal Monsters, this one has not gotten a remake or a redo or of any kind. Because Frankenstein, Dracula, even Fan of the Opera, The Bride of Frankenstein hasn't gotten one either, but she is getting one here soonish. But this one, the only time this one, felt, this one has actually been on film was not necessarily a remake, but it was inspired by... Um, the creature from the Black Lagoon, The Shape of Water from Guillermo del Toro. That was kind of inspired from uh, the creature. But outside that, I mean, there's really, this creature, in my opinion, has gotten no love from modern day horror films. And that's kind of sad because I like, this one was one of my favorites. Like, I will go out of my way and rewatch this again. Like, for real, for real. And they were going to do a Dark Universe reboot 
of this movie, but of course, after the mummy in 2017, they decided to not do any of those dark universe films, which is a shame because I wanted to see more of that, but whatever. (laughs) Break my heart universal. It's fine. So symbolism. I guess it was kind of hard to spot symbolism in this one. But I'm Fair. thinking maybe there's something about morality. Okay. Because earlier there is the clash between like I'm just here to take photos of the creature and document its existence. And the other one's like I'm here to kill this thing. Period. And the guy who's killing it seems like he's absolutely there just for the sport of it, but it also seems more like he's just there to protect everybody. Yeah, and I'm not entirely sure, but it. It plays on the trope that you see in a lot of movies that take place on a boat with a certain amount of people where there's always like the crusty captain who's typically some foreign character who speaks in like as if English isn't his first language. And then they play with this other trope of we're here to document everything. And this person who's here, like I'm either here to hunt or I just take survival very seriously. Like the movie Anaconda comes to mind. Because it's like the yeah. same character setup. Pretty much every movie is that has that same setup, like Anaconda, you could probably trace it back to a creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. Exactly. It, so it kind of paved the way for a lot of, more of the monster animal films, like like Anaconda, as Banyib was saying. Or even, you can even say Jaws to an extent some more sea monster water creatures. Oh, I think there's something more to this film that I didn't quite um, pick up on. And it may have been in the exposition because a lot of it did have those long talking points. And I started to lose interest. Like I kind of want to see the creature do more havoc Mm -hmm. because to me, like the creature seems like he's just trying to survive in this environment where he's, probably the only one of his kind left he's giving frankenstein because frankenstein didn't kill anybody until he was provoked to and they probably would have been fine if they didn't provoke or tried to attack the creature the gill man they probably would have been they might have been fine let me rephrase that they might have been fine might have been fine and because he's the only one, it's probably like he doesn't have any one of his, of his species. So naturally yeah. he kidnaps Kay because she's the closest thing that resembles a mate. So he's like, I can reproduce. And he's taking her away. It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. not a, No, dude. No. No, stop. Like a typical King Kong thing. Or like, oh, yeah. no. Twas beauty that killed the beasts. <laughs> But yeah, all I could really pick up on it was like, I want to observe this thing, but I have this guy who's just wanting to kill this thing, and it's not clear who is in the right. And even towards yeah. the end, where they shoot the guy, shoot the creature with bullets, it's like, no, let him, let him go. Like we've done enough. And I think yeah. the movie's meant to be like is the creature really the evil one or is it the people that showed up uninvited? Exactly. So for me, I might want to rewatch it just to get a better idea of what this film is about. Yeah. Agreed. So rating system, one out of five. Uh, one out of five Gilman. Yeah. <laughs> One out of five Gilman. I'm going to rate this, uh, dare I say, five out of five Gilman? What? Are you biased or something? I really like this film. I really did. I thought it was perfect. <laughs> like, I love the way it was shot. It might have been because of the way it was shot. And then the storyline, I always, I always had a love for the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, but I don't know. This movie really jived with me. It's, it's, I would say I like this a little more than the bride. So yeah, I'm going to stand by that. You know what? I'm going to double down five out of five, five out of five Gilman for me. 
Okay. I can't quite meet you there, but that's fine. I'll, I'll give it a four. Work, work, get it. Because it is like a better movie than you'd expect it to be. Like, especially yes. if you were exposed to like the classic, or like here are some horror monsters and you see Dracula and Frankenstein and the Wolfman and the mummy. Like you see them show up like the cast of hotel Transylvania. And then you hear about the creature from the black lagoon. You're like, wait, who the heck is this guy? And like, Oh, we don't talk about it very much, but he's worth mentioning. And he is. He's a, he's a one monster. That's not getting a lot of love and he should be. So I think you can make a really good horror film out of that concept. So I'm hoping they do do a remake of the creature at some point. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking the thing that holds me back from giving it a five myself would probably be the characters don't strike me as that interesting initially. Like the two characters who are battling with like their own beliefs and value system. Sure. But K is sort of just the damsel in distress, and that's kind of it for her. Yeah. And the other characters are just like one dimensional in a way, but they're not like completely one dimensional. Like they have something to them that's just not enough for them to be like all that memorable. In fact, I can't even remember like which person is which. Like I'm trying to think, was Dr. Reed the one who was more interested in studying and. Dr. Mark is the one who's interested in hunting. I think so. Yeah, I, I honestly get them mixed up. They they look the same. They're the, the same. They're the same white guy. <laughs> the same white guy. I mean, they they kind of not do, wrong. Right? They kind of do. Not wrong. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, and others, the final score is four point five out of five you like it please go check it out if you're interested go please go check it out it's it's a must watch for the monsters it should be you watch frankenstein the briar frankenstein and this and maybe dracula first there'll be a toss-up between this and actually a toss-up between this and frankenstein because i would say watch bride of frankenstein being you watch frankenstein first so double feature that shit but yeah, yeah, so that is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Catch us next time as we talk about another old school horror film from the 1940s. And this one's not part of the Universal Horror Films. We're kind of going off to another place. So to find out what we're talking about, please join us next week. Until then, bye. Goodbye.